In the next lecture, you'll learn about how the OSPF cost metric works and how it's based on interface bandwidth by default. But before we get there, I want to explain how the bandwidth command works and what it does and how it relates to the speed and the clock rate commands, because this is a common source of confusion. OK, so starting with the speed command first. The rate that Ethernet interfaces physically transmit at is set by the speed command. Gigabit Ethernet interfaces transmit at 1000 megabits per second by default. 1000 megabits per second is 1 gigabit per second. And fast Ethernet interfaces transmit at 100 megabits per second by default. For example, if you use the speed 10 command on a fast Ethernet interface and it supports it, it will physically transmit at 10 megabits per second instead. So if you do that, you need to make sure that you manually set the speed on both sides of the link or you're going to have problems. But when you do that, it changes the actual physical speed of the interface from 100 megabits per second to 10 megabits per second. So on Ethernet interfaces, it's a speed command that you can use to change the default physical speed of the interface. Next command we have is the clock rate command, and this works on serial interfaces. Serial interfaces used to be used very commonly on WAN links, not so much nowadays, but you do still find them. The rate that serial interfaces physically transmit at is set by the clock rate command. Serial interfaces transmit at 1.544 megabits per second by default. That is the speed of a T1 interface that used to be commonly used in the United States. Cisco are a US company, so that's why that is the default. If you use the clock rate 64,000 command on a serial interface, it will physically transmit at 64 kilobits per second. So a serial interface transmits at 1.5 megabits per second by default. You can change that by using the clock rate command to set a transmit rate in kilobits per second. And again, this will change the physical speed of the interface. And again, it has to match on both sides of the link. OK, so that was the speed and the clock rate commands, which do change the physical transmission rate of interfaces. Next up, we have got the bandwidth command, which does not. So interfaces also have a default bandwidth. For example, 100 megabits per second on fast Ethernet interfaces, 1.544 megabits per second on a serial interface. And you see that defaults to what the speed and the clock rate defaulted to as well. And the bandwidth does usually match the physical transmission rate of the interface. It will do by default. And normally, as the administrator, we want to leave it at that as well. We want it to have it set to that. The bandwidth setting on an interface does not affect the physical transmission rate. That is set by the speed or the clock rate. So if you set a bandwidth of 50 megabits per second on a fast Ethernet interface, it will still transmit at 100 megabits per second. OK, so if the bandwidth setting does not affect the actual physical speed of an interface, what does it do then? Well, it affects software policy on the router, such as which path will be selected by our routing protocols, EIGRP or OSPF, or how much bandwidth will be guaranteed to a traffic type by QoS. For example, if you've configured a QoS policy, which is going to guarantee your video traffic a third of the bandwidth on an interface, the way that you tell the router how much bandwidth is actually there is with the bandwidth command. So you can influence software policy by setting the bandwidth on an interface. Now, like I said, you normally want the bandwidth to actually match the physical interface. On an Ethernet interface, it's going to do that by default anyway. On a serial interface, it's going to default to 1.5 megabits per second always. So if it's actually a 64K or a 128K interface, then you're definitely going to want to set the bandwidth command on that interface to make sure that the bandwidth, which affects the software policy, is also matching the actual physical bandwidth on the interface. Now, you don't have to have the matching. Sometimes you want to override what would happen by default. So you don't do this very commonly, but it is possible to set the bandwidth to be different than the actual bandwidth on the physical interface if you want to influence software policy. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, 
then you can download my 400 page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.